All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 31 of Coffee is for Closers. Today, we have a very special guest. I have also had a month of practice. A month of practice with the side-by-side situation, so our special guest will not disappear this time. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, welcome to episode number 31 of Coffee is for Closers. I am Michelle, a.k.a. the Pitch Queen, and today we have a special guest, Shamika. So Shamika, welcome to the show, and for those of you that don't know Shamika, how about you introduce yourself real quick? Hey, everybody. I'm Shamika Tankerson, and I work with, I don't know, powerhouse, ambitious business owners, mostly service professionals, people who who have a service that they sell. And I help them to acknowledge the massive value that they bring to the table because they have mad skills, um, charge more and sell more without apologizing for it. Love it. She like speaks my language. It's so cool. It's so awesome. Well, uh, thank you, Shamika, for being here. Hey, maybe we'll keep this as like a once a month type date situation. We'll see. But I'm totally down. Uh, she's down. Okay, I'm for sure down then. <laughs> because we have a lot of fun here. And I also love it to share with all of you a lot of what we talk about, but from someone else's perspective, you know, and someone else that also is in alignment with what, what I think and how we can really help our clients at a higher level, but also how can we get paid for it? And how can you feel like you're actually getting paid what you're worth and that you're not just giving out, you know, your, your information for free and you're a nonprofit. However, that does not come without having a proper entrepreneurial sales mindset. So that is the discussion for today. And that's what we're going to be sharing a lot about today. So for those of you that, um, Hmm. I can actually share my screen and show you the slides too. I have figured this part out. Go girl. I, I'm all like super tech. I am not a techno tard anymore. I'm techno, <laughs> I'm techno smart. <laughs> Just took me a couple times. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's one thing I did forget to do on the checklist though. So let me see how this actually works, but you guys can see my screen. Can you, yeah, it works. See, you see both of us and my screen. Okay. So again, this is Coffee is for Closers. Today we're talking about the entrepreneurial sales mindset with our special guest. I just want to go over what our agenda is for today. So you all know what you can expect and what can, what can you learn? So we're going to share obviously our cup of wisdom. We're going to talk about your emotional state and habits of an entrepreneurial mindset. And if you're a small business owner, business owner, entrepreneur, whatever you want to call yourself, but you're kind of in business for yourself and you don't work for anybody else, that means this is you. Um, Building a strong mindset. What are some things you can do to help you build a strong mindset? And overcoming and learning from your past obstacles and how that maybe can help you moving forward with your positive mindset. Again, your mind has a lot to do with the outcomes that you get with selling your services and really helping your clients out too. So Shamika, this is your page. Do you want to share a little bit about what you are, who you are, what you sell, um, your book and anything else you want to talk about? Sure. I mean, I kind of gave a little one liner about who I am and who I serve. Um, one of the things that I recognize when giving sales strategy to the clients that I work with that it didn't matter how much strategy I piled on top of it. Um, the problems that they had had to do with the beliefs, their underlying beliefs. And so that's what shifted me from looking at, OK, here's the strategy. Here's what you need to say and scripting and those things to dealing with belief, personal power, how they show up on the call. So I'm really glad we're going to talk about this day. I really am. Um, so, yeah, like you said, I am a best selling author. I wrote a book called The Power of Permission, How to Set Fire to Your Fears and Sell More. That's available on Amazon.com. So you can you can go grab that over there. Put the link in the comments later. We're going to put the link in the comments later so you guys can like just click it and go buy it. Yeah. 
definitely will do that. Um, I'm also creator of something called the authority selling method. And basically it's a simple yet powerful framework for having conversations with people that both serve and sell. Most of the people who come into my world, they are people who love to help and serve other people. They want to be of service. They want to have big impact in the world. They want to impact other people's lives, their businesses, their relationships. And so what, what comes with that oftentimes is this like, I don't know what to charge. I shouldn't charge for this. It's just something I love to do. And so they have to deal with the inner workings of all of that stuff. And so I created the authority selling method and my formula for conversations that's called I serve. Um, that's really based on allowing people to have conversations where they can have powerful conversations with people, serve them in a powerful way, but still make money. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. Well, Welcome, Shamika, the show. It's so awesome to have you here. You are now enrolled in a once a month date with me right here on Coffee is for Closers since you said you were game for that. So uh, Shamika already said that. So I'll just say maybe the first Tuesday of every month, it, we're going to be right here. <laughs> so make sure to tune in every single first Tuesday, uh, but we'll we'll solidify the dates later. Anyway, let's talk about and get into what we are here to talk about today. So if you guys have questions for myself or for Shamika or have a thought or have a comment or have a struggle and that struggle is like really real about your emotional state for your sales mindset department <laughs> when you're operating your businesses, please put them in the comments below and we'll get to them at the end, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about today is how your emotional state of your mind can actually affect your sales efforts in your business. So that is the first uh, on the agenda for today. So Shamika, you want to give us your take and, you know, maybe something that actually happened to you when you realized how important our sales mindsets really affect us and really affect our businesses. Yeah, I think one of the most important things to really understand about having conversations with people about money and about sales, even just walking them through the decision making process for whether or not they want to hire you is literally you project everything you think and believe to your client. It's like a big broadcast system. Mm -hmm. So if secretly you kind of believe that um Maybe you can't get the person results or you believe maybe you may not be the best person for the job. They'll never tell you that they have a sense of that. They'll tell you something like, I can't afford it. I need to talk to my spouse. Can you send me some more information? And in reality, it's everything that you're being in that conversation that's sending them red flags. Mm -hmm. And so their subconscious is picking up on your subconscious talking to them. <laughs> It's crazy. So can you share like a real life example of something that you noticed that you did that completely shifted how you wanted an end result to occur when you were having a sales conversation with somebody because of this exact thing that you just mentioned? I think my business as a whole has shifted with this understanding, like how I show up um, when I'm in a conversation with someone is very different than I used to show up. And there was a time when my business was completely struggling, right? I was completely struggling, completely struggling to get clients. Mm -hmm. And it was because I had had a business already that I'd lost. Mm -hmm. And so what was happening is <laughs> on the outside. got that in common. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff in common, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so what was happening is like on the outside, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go get this client. I got this great lead. And, you know, on the inside, I was like, they're going to know I'm a fraud. They're going to find out, you know, that I lost everything. And how can I help them if I wasn't mm -hmm. able to help myself? And I had this internal di dialogue mm -hmm. coming on every single time I was in a conversation with people. And what would happen is it didn't matter how well the conversation went it would always end in some sort of, I need to think about it. Like you're amazing. I know this could possibly work for me, but no thanks kind of. Um, and so I, actually worked on my mindset. I, I hired somebody to work on some of the stories that I had because I didn't recognize they were there. So is that like I a therapist? 
No, I'm not a therapist. Oh, okay. um, just like I a mean, mindset coach. What? A coach? Mindset yeah, just coach? like a okay. mindset coach. Like somebody who just helped me walk through some of the internal dialogue that I was having with myself. Things that when I say internal dialogue, I thought they were very valid reasons. I thought mm-hmm. they were truths and they were my truths at the time, but it wasn't the truth. Right. Right. It wasn't yeah. the truth. It was a truth, truth that I had held because of what I had been through. Right. Right. So they allowed me to see that. Like, is that really the truth? Oh, no, it's not really the truth. Right. Right. It's something that happened to me in the past, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be the case right now. Yeah, no, it's it's so true. Yeah. So the more I became aware of those kind of patterns and, and ways that I was showing up in conversations, I was able to catch them. Right. And say, okay, no, I don't want that to be my truth. My truth is I know what the heck I'm doing. I'm pretty badass at what I do and I can help you. And so um, we're going to talk about some of the things that we do to get ready for those conversations and mindset routines. So I won't jump into that right now, but awareness. So the awareness of what you're thinking under the surface before you go into a conversation so that you can show up powerfully in your conversations, how you want to show up. You want to show up confident, not fake confidence where you just put on like, I'm a closer. (laughs) We don't want to do that. Right. Most of us just want to want to help people. Right. We want to be there with them as they make the decision. And we know what we have is going to support them. But these underlying conversations just get in the way. Yeah. It's like that little voice in our head that talks to us. So maybe someone, you know, might not know that's listening to this. Well, how do I find a mindset coach? Like what are three other things? Because I know that's not the only tool you use. What are some other tools once you realize that maybe it's the conversations you're having with yourself and you realize that it's your truth, but it's really not the truth. Mm -hmm. What other tools do you think would be really helpful for people from your point of view that can help them with these conversations they're having in their head? Because until you can actually overcome that, it's going to be really hard to move forward authentically. Yeah. So I think we sort of talked about this last time with my three permission slips. That was a big, huge factor um, in the difference between who I am now and who I'm becoming and who I was then. Mm-hmm. Right. We can um, repeat so, stuff. We Sometimes repetition is key. <laughs> yeah. So those three permission slips, uh, the first one is to trust your value. So it's permission to trust your value. Right. Remembering that mm-hmm. no matter what you've experienced, any setbacks, disappointments, You've been with yourself all your life, right? So you know all your mistakes. Everybody else doesn't know all that. So we're really hard on ourselves, right? We're like, but that one time, you know, I didn't do this right. Or like me, I lost everything, right? And so that that shame of that, I carried that into, into the conversation. But here's what I didn't honor. I didn't honor the fact that me losing my business, you know, that time around, um, it didn't take away from the value that I brought to the table. Yeah. Right. And so the example I love to use with this is like taking like a twenty dollar bill. Right. If I take a twenty dollar bill and I crumble it up, how much is it worth? Twenty bucks. Right. If I put it on the ground and I stomp on it and I like drag it around, how much is it worth? Twenty bucks. Right. So all of the investments you've made into time and your business and um, all of the learning that you've had doesn't get taken away because you have a setback, because you didn't do you didn't get a major client or a major deal. You still hold the same value that you bring to the table each time. So the first one is permission to trust your value. The second one is permission to claim my expert status. Permission to claim my expert status, permission to not wait on somebody to invite me to the table to say, you are the best at this. Oh, let's invite Michelle over because she is the closer lady. Like you have to deem yourself. I'm the pitch queen, right? right? (laughs) Claim your own seat. So instead of waiting on someone to say, oh, you're the best attorney or you're the best accountant or you're the best, you know, coach or sales coach or consultant or whatever, you recognize that you have immense value that you bring to the table. You're good at what you do. You've invested in yourself so much and you ha- you can help people. And my favorite story about this is Muhammad Ali. When I ask people, no matter where they're from, who's the greatest boxer of all time? Yep. They'll say Muhammad Ali without fail. There's no question about it. Yep. Right. Some people might try to 
you know, joke with me a little bit, but they know they want to say Muhammad Ali, right? It doesn't matter what age, what ethnicity. And so then my follow-up question to them is always this, who said he was the greatest? Do you know? Who deemed him the greatest? He deemed himself the greatest. He did. He's the one who said I'm the greatest. And in fact, he was quoted as saying, I said I was the greatest before I ever knew I was. Because you got to be, then you have to do, and then you're going to have it. Right? Yes. So he proclaimed it. He declared it. I believe that when you when you begin to change who you are, it starts a shift in identity starts with a declaration. So he began to declare it. Right. His mind and everybody else in the world took notice. And guess what? To this day, he's the greatest. Yeah. And a lot and of so, people listening. Declaration also means like affirmations. We've talked yes. about that before. Like I am X. I am like I am gracefully resilient, inspiring myself and others to take a stand for what we want right now, not tomorrow, because there might not be a tomorrow. So something along those lines is that declaration that she's talking about. Yes. So just giving yourself permission to claim your authority, claim your expert status, claim that you are the best person for the job. Yeah. Right. And owning that. And then the last one is just permission to sell more. (laughs) You know, a lot of times sales gets a bad rap. It just does. People think, oh, sales is slimy. Oh, I don't want to be. I'm not selling to you. I'm like, nothing happens until you sell. You are selling to people. It's listen, everybody. Listen, if you have a business and you have clients in order to get those clients, you are selling them. It's okay. (laughs) It's okay. If you didn't want to sell, you would just go get a J-O-B because they go do the selling for you so you can just service the clients. Robert Kiyosaki said sales is the number one skill set that you must have in business. And if you don't know how to sell, you don't want to sell. Don't bother becoming a business owner. <laughs> That's what he said. I totally agree. <laughs> and it, and it's so funny. Like people, you know, some of the people I work with or maybe you work with or maybe other service providers, you might be going around like, wow, making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. And you feel like you should probably be making four times that, like 200000 a year, because that's what you would get paid if you got a job in your expertise in your field. But you are like, I don't want to charge that much. Well, right. Well, you know, I no, no, no. Like, I should just do it for this amount because someone down mm-hmm. the street's doing it for that amount. So you forget about all your worth and your value, and then your yes. mind is going to God knows what places it's in. <laughs> Or you're just waiting for people to show up and bang your door down. You're following the field of dreams marketing model. If you build it, they will come, right? In reality, you haven't told anybody. Like people around you don't even know what you really do and how you can help people, what programs you offer, what services do you offer? Because you never really talk about it. You're like, well, if they want to know, they'll ask. Right. Yeah, no, and it's so true. And like I said, Shamika and I have a lot in common. But with me and when I had to close my last company, uh, God, it was almost a year ago, you guys. Can you believe the death of Fitzy Foods has been almost 12 months? But like you said, all those lessons learned, I call it my $2 million MBA yes. program. Yes. And, and there's no MBA program in this country or at Harvard or anywhere that will teach you what I learned. And now I'm just like on this mission to help all of you, like Shamika, teach you from the lessons that we learned because, you know, you can stomp all over it, but it was still worth all those lessons. And so much more. I feel like the things that I thought that I was ashamed of losing everything actually make me more valuable. Like who I am to my clients today is because I've been through that. Like I can guide them and say, Don't step here. I've already done that. It looks like this. Right. But I'm also a different person because of what I went through. And the me that I am today could never hold the space for my clients that I do, you know, for their transformation, for them to play a bigger game, for them to charge more. I wouldn't be able to do it because I see in them some of the same things I saw in myself when I was struggling with some of these permissions that I gave myself. Yep. Those three permissions, write them down, memorize them. Rewind, repeat, listen, rewind, repeat, listen. All right. Well, let's get into some of the habits, right? Because this stuff just doesn't like happen in the snap of the finger. It does not happen overnight. It does take hard work. It does take commitment, right? It, this isn't just, uh, 
you're going to wake up and, oh, I've changed my mindset as a, you know, <laughs> that, I am going to approach this client much different than all the other ones before. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, that is just not how it works. So there are different habits that I know Shamika uses that I use for creating a really good entrepreneurial sales mindset and ways on how you can build it. So Shamika, do you want to share what you do? Yeah, so there's a few things. I actually have, everybody's going to think I'm super crazy for the, for saying this, but I have a two-hour morning um, kind of mindset daily preparation um, power practice. Let's call it that because it's not really routine and it's not really a ritual. It's a power practice that I do every day. And it's really just about feeding my spirit and making sure that before I hit the ground running in my business, I'm prepared to take on the day and I'm as powerful as I can be uh-huh. for my clients and for the, anybody that I'm going to interact with. What do you do in the two hours? Yes, yeah, so I do lots of stuff and there's no like, it has to be this way. It's really whatever I need. So some of the things that I do is I have an affirmation CD that I listen to every single day. That's just reminding me um, that I'm a powerful manifester, reminding me um, that I do good wherever I go. Just those kinds of things. Just sort of always reminding me I always have enough money for everything that I need, right? Over and beyond. So just this whole series of like, it's like an hour and 45 minutes long. So I just let it play until I feel like, okay. I'm done, I believe, (laughs) right? (laughs) So I have that and it interchanges between that and like I totally have a dance party. So I have an in-shower Bluetooth speaker. (laughs) That is awesome. You have an in-shower Bluetooth speaker and you do a dance party in the shower? Yeah, in the shower and I'm just going for it, singing to the top of my lungs, dancing, just letting myself, I don't know, just enjoy that moment. Um, Because I think so often in the shower, we're like, what do we have to do? And we're so we're not present. We're like mind numbingly just going through the washing of our bodies. Right. And so it's one moment where it's just me and no one else. No one's getting in the shower with me. Right. It's just me. And so I take that moment to just be my own uninhibited self and just enjoy life. And I laugh at myself and I sing to the top of my lungs and I dance around um, in my shower. So that's another thing. Okay, that's awesome. What (laughs) Uh, else? I feed myself. So I make sure I eat, you know, as business owners, that's one thing we can be horrible at is making sure that we nurture ourselves. And so I make sure that I I do feed and nourish myself good food um, in the morning. So I'll cook my food or prepare my meal, whatever I need to do. But I always make sure that I eat, you know, as I'm starting my day so that I do have some fuel to start my day off with. Those are the major things that I do. There's other things that I do that come and go. Let's get a bonus. We'll call this a bonus. Yeah. So the bonus things are, um, you know, I might journal out like my intentions for the day as far as, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to reach out to like three people just to reach out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I have a mantra that I do sometimes that I got from a program that I did called Infinite Receiving, in case any of you guys want to know, with Maru um, Isabella. It's called Infinite Receiving. And so one of the things that I do is I stand outside And I just lift my arms like to the fullest capacity that I can. And I repeat um, my capacity for whatever I want. So I can say my capacity to receive is expanding infinitely day every day. Mm -hmm. Right. My capacity to receive clients who pay me in full is expanding every day. So sometimes I will do that. Um, And that's the, the, the bulk of it. You know, I'll write love notes to myself, whatever I feel like I need to do. That's awesome. Like, how often do we take time to just say everything we love about ourselves? Not enough. Right? Because we're like, oh, my gosh, that's too prideful. Oh, this. And if you don't do it, who's going to do it? So I wait in a long time. Right. So here's what I feel about mindset stuff. In my mindset stuff, I'm teaching people. I'm by treating myself a certain way. I'm teaching other people how to treat me. Does that make sense? Yeah. My clients. I'm saying this is what I'm deserving of. I'm deserving for, of time for myself. I'm deserving of laughter. I'm deserve, deserving of focused attention, right? Yeah. I'm deserving of good food. Um, all of these things. I'm deserving of just feeling good. 
And so if you feel deserving, what happens is when you step into your business and you step into your world or you step into a sales conversation, that radiates out. And then people go, this person is deserving of me working with her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I think your morning routine, you're on to something. And, you know, maybe enough, not enough of us talk about it. But, you know, I, I also have one. I mean, I literally wake up. And I, um, I brush my teeth because I don't like to go to the gym with stinky breath. And then I go to the gym. Or like today, I have a gym in my garage and I just went down there and I hadn't worked out there in so long and I blast my music really loud. I do not have a dance party like you. But <laughs> I, I get my body moving though. So maybe it's like you in that you're dancing and having a dance party, but it's getting your body moving. And I work out for anywhere from like 45 minutes to an hour and 15, hour and 30 tops. But that's like pushing it. And then you got to refuel, right? So just like Tamika, I, I eat something. This is the time where I really miss my last business. I miss Fitzy Foods because all my meals were already made. Uh, but now I get it from one of my friends, Pete Paleo, from Pete's Paleo. Tamika, I don't know if you've ever tried them, but they're really good. I have it. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Yeah, it's good because, you know, we don't have time to cook, clean, grocery shop, prepare meals, and your results in your business and how your mind is, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for me, because I don't like eating, like if I could just sip out of a straw all day and drink shakes, I'd probably be good. <laughs> I don't really love food. but You are the second person this week that I've seen say something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I don't like to cook. I barely know how. Um, I would cook for someone else. Um, that's even that's more fun as long as they like it, because if I make something that they don't like it, then it's like a double suck. It would really be terrible. <laughs> But yeah, I, that's why I started my last company was because there's so many of us that are just too busy and don't want to go to the grocery store, come home, prep your food. I've seen you prep your meals and stuff. That's hours of time where I could be like going to a yoga class or I'm learning Spanish and I could be learning my, doing my homework. It's it just all this. We only have so much time in the day. So, uh, that anyway, that's my morning routine. Then I drink two shots of espresso with almond milk, cinnamon, and a little bit of Truvia, and then I can start my day. That's my morning routine. Oh, and I say my um, affirmation like 50 to 100 times, and then I also, I'm not really big on journaling, so if you're not a big journaler, another thing that I do is just say it out loud, things you're grateful for. You know, I've, I think I've had 12 different people say, write down all the things you're grateful for. The writing is not my thing. I type and I talk. So... <laughs> If you just say it out loud, I do it while I'm doing cardio at the gym. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I think a, a routine that gets you started, because it's so easy to be hectically, just hit the ground running and try to yeah. jump into your day. And you're scatterbrained at that point, and you're not showing up and you're at your highest level of service or your highest level of power. Yep. No, I, I am right there with you. So for everyone listening, maybe come up with a morning routine, you know, a three-step three-step morning routine that you can like stick to every single day that can help get your mind right before you jump in. It's kind of like um, a football player. If they were to go like the guy is in the Super Bowl, if they didn't tie their shoes and, you know, go to the training room and get their ankles taped or something, they could have broken ankle during the Super Bowl. It's the same thing, except we need to think about it in our businesses and how we're serving clients. But they have a routine. If you think of any athlete they put on their headphones, they get their mind right with their music, they have a chit chat with their coach. You know, if you don't have a coach, find an accountability partner. Maybe that's part of your morning routine. You know, you have someone you call every day. But I just, I like to think of it like athletes, you know, they go through routines. Okay, let's talk about, um, Shmika, real quick, our last thing for today, which is, we sort of touched on it, but maybe we can go a little bit deeper in it. How has overcoming and learning from our past obstacles, you know, can really improve our mindset? How actually the mistakes that we've made and the challenges that we've been through actually can really help us? Yeah, I, you know, I think there's a, a misnomer that if you try not to make mistakes somehow, <laughs> you know, everything's going to be perfect. And that's... Perfection's a lie, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's fear, right? Masquerading as perfection. Yes. And so I think, you know, my past mistakes actually giving myself grace 
and um, allowing myself, understanding that failure is part of the process, right? Yeah. It's not, it doesn't mean I'm wrong or that something's wrong with me. I guess that's what I, I would rather say. Something's wrong with me or that I don't know what I'm doing. It just means that there was a lesson in that. And right. so I really feel like if any mistake that you make, if you can find and focus on the lesson in the mistake, take the lesson from it instead of focusing on the, oh, my gosh, I did it again or, oh, my gosh, I messed up one more time. Here we go again, because every time you do that, you're refer- reaffirming in your brain the negative feeling behind it and emotion behind it, which, again, makes you feel fearful and apprehensive about moving forward, having a sales conversation, going after a big deal or a big contract. But if you can focus on the win, all you're doing is focusing on what went well, like what did I get out of this? And then you take that negative emotion away from it. You'll find yourself growing more and more and more. That's what's worked for me. And it's been amazing to just shift my mindset. Like I don't even look at failure like failure anymore. Right. It's almost like I'm failing, <laughs> you know, as opposed to shoot. Yeah. I'm no, I, it's a good point. I mean, I probably. Like the outcome of Fitzy Foods in my last company wasn't the one I was planning for. Let me tell you. But, you know, even one of the investors rudely sent me a message like a few months after saying, wow, it looks like everything's going really great for you after your massive failure. And in my head, I'm like, yep, it is. You know, I learned all those lessons and I'm not going to make those mistakes again. Thanks so much for acknowledging that. So I took it and spun it as the positive, but a lot of people from our outside, I think it's really important too, in learning from our past experiences and failures, we also need to watch out who we're surrounding ourselves from because that negative energy from people around us can really ruin our sales mindset missions and goals. (laughs) So, you know, I had to eliminate that person from my sphere because it just wasn't serving me anymore and it's not going to help any of the people that I'm able to make an impact on now what did I try everything I could with my last company yeah I tried everything like you said I mean I pitched Costco and vitamin shop and I I did so much for such a little company that I'm surprised we even made it that far (laughs) but like you said you can only learn from those and see I just see every experience and what did I learn How did it help me grow? How is this actually going to help like a million other people, you know? Yeah. So I think what you just said is super powerful. If we go back to that first permission slip that we talked about, permission to trust your value. I think that fear that what happened to you is a looming fear for a lot of people that somebody who knew them in a past life, Mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter if it was a business that failed, but somebody who knew them before they became the person who they are today is going to show up out of somewhere and say, no, you suck, right? I know I had that fear that somebody who was part of the business that I had before would show up and say, she's she's a fraud, right? The fraud factor was just super huge. And so you having the 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 inside fortitude to be able to say, you know what? Yes, I am doing very well after that is huge. And it's okay. Yeah. Right. It's okay for you to do well. You don't have to hide in plain sight and, and secretly whisper around when you've had setbacks and disappointments in your business and in your life. Yeah. And I'm probably the last 10 months of having these conversations literally every day and on here, you know, on the podcast and everything. I mean, it's probably sort of uh, therapeutic in a way. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, Shamika, anything else on what someone maybe can learn from a past experience to shift into that positive side? Like maybe when you see a negative or something from your past, like what is your process that you go through to see the positive and not the negative? I don't know that I have a process as much okay. as I just have trained myself. I catch myself. So the, the fastest way to do any mindset work, I'm not a mindset expert. Let's just get that out there. First of all, <laughs> I'm an expert on what's helped me and what helps my clients based on what I share with them. That's helped me. Right. So interrupting any pattern. Right. So the moment I'm aware of something. So awareness is first. So once you become aware, oh, this is a pattern that I fall into. 
right? Yeah. Once I, um, once somebody, something triggers me, we call it a trigger, mm-hmm. like something happens and it sends you railing, spiraling. It makes you feel less than whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. When you get that trigger, that means you're aware. Oh, wow. This happens every single time. So now that you are aware, you can interrupt that pattern of emotion. Right. You can stop and say, okay, I get to choose what I want to look at, how I want to feel and how I want to behave in this moment. Yep. And you have the power. I so like it. It's the powerful. pattern interrupt. Yeah. So any kind of pattern interrupt. And here's the most powerful pattern interrupt that I have found. Not, oh my gosh, you need to stop it. That's not a good pattern interrupt. Because <laughs> that's you like beating up yourself again, right? Um, gratitude. Immediately get into gratitude. Like immediately, I don't care. Find the first thing that's in your line of sight. I'm grateful for the Starbucks cup right here next to me. Like just get it, start getting into gratitude over and over again. I'm so grateful that I woke up this morning. I'm grateful that I have water, right? Clean water that I can drink and nourish my body. I'm grateful that I'm on this podcast today. I'm grateful that I have clients who love me. I'm grateful that I have money in my bank account. I'm grateful that I have my kids and family surrounding me. If you get into gratitude, you can't have two emotions at the same time. No, you can't. And also, you know what else helps that I do? You is get into some sort of different different physical state so if you're seated stand up walk around you know because when you change your physical um being then that also will help so what if you do physical movement change and gratitude change Woo! yes you'll, power be on, punch. you'll be on the you'll be on the up and up <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Shamika, for being here with us today and sharing all of your wisdom and knowledge. These, uh, you know, half hours just kind of fly by. But yeah. I do want to open it up for questions for anybody that does have some questions that they typed in. So maybe we can just answer them if they're not around. Also, if you guys want um, the reminders of when we do this, you can type in show in the comments below. S-H-O-W, you're going to get the reminders and you can also get the slides and you'll also get um, a notification like with the permalink for today. So Bethany, first time here. She struggles with mindset and sales. Fear of rejection is hard. Shamika, what do you have on fear of rejection? Yeah, I was just looking at that and I was thinking... Bethany, by no stretch of the imagination, am I telling you that anything's just going to be easy and go like this. But if you get some tools, you can begin to move yourself through that. And there's usually some reason for that underlying fear of rejection. So you already said it's rejection. One of the things that I teach my clients is to understand, and mostly women struggle with this. When a client says no, they're not saying no to you, the person. They're not saying, Bethany, you suck. (laughs) They're saying no, this person product, this service is not a good fit for me right now. They're saying, no, I'm not ready to make the decision to move forward in this time and space. They're saying, no, I'm not ready to part with the money that I have and and get the transformation that I say I desire to have. They're not saying, no, Bethany, your skills are not on par. No, Bethany, you suck as a human being. They're not saying that. So if you can get into reality about the fact that a no to your offer or product or service is not saying no to you or automatically saying something is wrong with you, it starts to get easier to face rejection because you understand it's all about them. Yeah, they're rejecting what they said they wanted. Right. If you're I don't know what you do for a living. And if you're still here and you can say she she sells luxury physical products to retail stores, independent stores and national department stores. Okay, and so like if you feel like you have the most amazing process service product out there and they're saying we need more products and services because we need to like increase our bottom line. We want to carry this type of product. And then they tell, you no. what they just said is we've said no. We said we wanted to increase our bottom line by by adding this. But no, we really don't want that. And it doesn't have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with them. Yeah, no, and I and I uh, can agree to that too. And just so you know, Bethany, you can go and listen to every single episode here um, on Success Unfiltered, and it's all about no's and rejections and how to, people overcame them to get to their version of success. Everyone from like Justin from Justin's Peanut Butter, Pat Flynn. Um, Mel Robbins, I mean, these are like people that we all deal with this all the time. 
And let yeah. me tell you, guess what? It doesn't go away. It just gets a lot. It never it goes just, away. It never goes away. It just, you'll start seeing it from a different point of view, just like Shamika just said, where it's, it's, they're just, it's not a good fit or, you know, what they said they told you. And then you've shown them what was possible and it, it got them scared. Maybe they have so many fears on their own that they're not even ready for you or yes. your product. Right. So for her, it's a luxury beauty. So I worked at Nordstrom and with my last company, I also pitched products into retail. So I have a lot of experience with this. At the end of the day, the buyers are going to buy from you. You have to have a good product, but you also have to think about when you're making your pitch to them that they're looking at you. So like when Vitamin Shop chose Fitzy Foods, they chose, yeah, we had a great product, but there were other great products on the market too. There's other prepared meal companies in the business at the time. There were a lot. So they chose me because I delivered on the promise. I went above and beyond and basically lived in New York for a year. So think about those things that make you unique as to why they would buy from you. Yes, you have a great product. Maybe it would go well in Nordstrom. But ultimately, what are you going to maybe do different or offer them that another beauty luxury line won't do? Maybe it's uh, you can do samples. Maybe you can do uh, demo weekends. You know, there's a whole arrangement of things that you can come up with that are going to be unique that no one else is going to do. And try to think about that because that's really some thing that could set you sell, set you apart from a lot of other people. So hopefully that helps um, with that. She asked what kind of mindset coach you work with, Shamika. Is there a different, are there different types of mindset coach? So I named one of the programs that I was in that, that was called Infinite Receiving. Um, so you can look that up. But really, um, I worked with somebody who did kinesiology as well. So they were able to use um, muscle testing on my body to tell me whether or not something was like deeply rooted or ingrained in my um, in my subconscious as a belief that I have. Because your body knows your body. Literally, if you were to put food that's not good for you on your hand, it would become weak. So wow. you can't lie and 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 stay powerful in your body. So literally if you tell a lie, you can't like fight. <laughs> yeah, anything. that that's so crazy. That that's true though because even like with Fitzy and it was on its last death pet, I call it like when we were in the hospice department, like we were in hospice at the time. I would go and get like body work done and the guy it was the stretching place so that it was called stretch you. And he'd be like Michelle what is wrong with you? Like you're, you're so tight and tense. And I'm like, I guess this is what it's like when someone dies in your family. I mean, I don't know, like my whole life is going into the grave right now. So everything that I put my life done in eight or nine years compiled is now dead almost. And that's like, it's, it's in your body. Like you said, mm -hmm. you know, so no, that's great. Uh, she's, one other question, how do you find out what other brands are doing? I found out by going and being a customer. <laughs> so like one of the brands at the time was My Fit Foods. I actually went to Austin and I went to Houston and went in their stores just to see what they were doing that I wasn't doing. So I did my own research. So depending on what kind of other competitor is doing, you can do research on them and find out what they're not doing that you could be doing. Um, so you've just got to do your research on your competition, like deep research. Uh, if they go to trade shows, show up at the trade shows they're going to, and you should probably be there too. If they're at a trade show and you're not there, there's probably a problem. Oh, okay. Um, someone said you were the bomb.com, Shmika. That's awesome. Yeah, she that is. Could be true. That could be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to second that one. I'm going to second that one. All right, you guys. Well, if you have any other questions, please put them in the comments below. Myself or Shamika can comment them on them later. Uh, we will see you in a month, probably. It was an honor to have you here, Shamika. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always super fun to do this. And, you know, thanks for everyone who uh, was here with us. And anything else you want to leave them with? I think I want to issue everybody with a challenge since we're going to come back and do this again next month. Okay. Um, Bethany talked about having that fear of rejection. I think a lot of people suffer from that. And because they do, they don't sell as much as they know they could. 
And so, like you said, they've got, you know, $50,000 a month businesses instead of $2,000, not $50,000 a month, but $50,000 a year businesses instead of $200,000 a year businesses, right? right? So here's the challenge. I want to, I want you guys, I want to give you a challenge to shift how you view no's. Let's play the no game. Okay. Let's see. And so instead of looking at no's as rejections and looking for yeses, over the next 30 days until we come back again, start looking for no's. Like every sales conversation you have, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm getting my next no. So this month I want to get 100 no's, right? Or I want to get 30 no's yeah. and do that instead. Go go in search of the no's. Yeah. I, and I, I promise I think that's you if you good, do that. I think that's a good challenge. Go listen for the no's and find them because once you start acknowledging yes. them and actually seeing them and saying, oh, that's not what they were talking about. Then all of you can take those no's and you get to choose what you want to do with them. And also yeah, and how you see them. it takes the sting out of it, right? It takes the sting out of hearing it. Yeah, because now you're looking for them. Yes. You're, you're, you're like, waiting you. for the no. <laughs> and then you might be so powerful because you've got your morning routine going. Let's have another challenge. You all do a morning routine. Come up with something. Three things that you can commit to every single morning. Even if it's one jumping jack, that's a new routine. It's something yes. different, right? You don't need to commit to the two-hour morning routine yeah, no. <laughs> or my hour routine or hour and a half. Some of that's just, that's how we do it. But right. if you can come up with your five-minute routine, that's different, right? Like maybe yeah. when you make breakfast, you actually put the dishes in the dishwasher instead of pile them up in the sink. I don't know if anyone does that, but... <laughs> I'm going to assume that a lot of people do that, but something that will help you get your mind right for your day. And a lot of it has to start with how we start our day and having things complete so we can go to our businesses and serve our people and pitch our luxury products to Nordstrom's at a very high level. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Cool. Well, thanks to for being here and thanks, thanks you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye guys.